All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, my name is Brian Coward. I'm the EDM product manager for Makino. Uh, if you haven't seen me already today. Um, in this session, we're going to talk about uh, Makino EDM drilling technologies. So we're going to talk about um, the technologies that we offer. Um, for EDM drilling and what some of the differences are on the different models. Um, so first of all, uh, this is the uh, pyramid of the machine models that we have. So at the very top of the pyramid is would be you know super accurate micro machining uh, type of applications. That is our EDFH machine. Um, and then a high precision application would be our EDAF 2 and 3 uh, fine hole machines. And then more of a general purpose machining um, with the BX and EDBV machines, although those are really not general purpose. There's uh, some unique features to those. And then our basic hole popper machines that uh, we offer through our SST distributors. So those are the four basic uh, lineups, different model types. Uh, just give you an idea of target applications and the general sizes of these machines. So the target applications for our uh, EDFH and the EDAFH machines would be, uh, you know, high accuracy holes, um, and those use an oil dielectric system for fine hole production. Um, the EDBVs and the BX3 would be uh, more of a production slash arrow engine hole uh, focused machine. And then we've got our FE machines, which would be, you know, basic start hole, wire EDM start holes, um, some light production, um, especially with the FE6 machine um, hole production there. And the maximum work size. So the FH is a, a fairly small machine. You can see the travels there is only 17 by 13, the 8-inch eight, eight Z. Uh, the EDAF 2 and 3 fine hole are the same travels as our standard EDAF machines. Um, the EDBV and BX3s come with a tilt rotary uh, table in them standard. Uh, so that's why you'll see that spec uh, is really more about the diameter, the largest diameter you can put in there, and the weight, because that's the weight that the table uh, can handle. So what makes these different or unique, and what are their applications? So we have our fine hole technologies, um, which would be our oil-based dielectric systems. And those machines are what we call our fine hole machines. Like I said, is the EDA, EDFH1 or the EDAF2 and 3 fine hole. So the EDFH1 is a specific machine only for hole production. So that is all that machine does. Um, it produces holes, period. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, we've sold a handful of those machines because it's a very specific type of application and it, it doesn't give you the flexibility. The EDAF 2 and 3, however, with the fine hole option, provides both EDM drilling capability and standard sinker EDM capabilities. So that means it's very easy to go from producing a hole with a fine hole or switching to do just standard EDM work. If you look at that picture there, you can see on the right hand side, uh, the operator there is switching the arm that attaches to the W axis. He's taking that off. Uh, the machine right there and I'll show there's a diagram that explains it a little bit better and then the center uh, picture you can see how this really functions so that that arm is on a W axis so it is a separate axis um, in the middle there's two little scissor arms that come out those are the middle guides and what that's doing is that's preventing that uh, tube from whipping around when it's spinning uh, and allowing it to get into the guide which is below it These machines are designed for ultra high accuracy. So these would be, you're looking for as good a, a hole sizing and hole finish that you could possibly get. 
Again, the guide arm is easily changed. And the focus is on hole and edge quality. So the entrance, entrance and exit hole quality, that's really the focus here, uh, and the finish as well. These machines can uh, automatically tool change electrodes down to a 4,000 diameter. So you can actually burn a hole smaller than 4,000 diameter, but you can't tool change it. And the reason you can't tool change it is it's so small that the movement of the tool changer will just whip it around and it'll never stop moving around. So 4,000 is as small as we can go with the tool change. So this shows the, the middle guide arm and how it really functions and mounts on the machine. So we're using a curvet coupler um, that mounts to the machine or, or mounts to the W axis. Uh, that arm has a hand, nice handle on the front so it's easy for the operator to grab, put it up there, lock it down and pull it off. Uh, we've even had customers make their own like arm external from the uh, machine where they just attach it to it when they're not using the fine hole. If you look at this diagram as well, you can see on the, the W axis there is uh, like four uh, quick connect. You can't really see the, the button or the hoses, but you can see right here, there's the quick connects. Um, so there are some quick connectors that you have to put on and off uh, when you put the arm on, but it's very easy. Uh, I think three of them are airlines and the other one is an actual plug. And you just plug it in. It's very easy to change on and off. So it gives you the flexibility to use it for a fine hole or a sinker. Um, most common question that we get when we're talking about the fine hole uh, from customers is what the L to D ratios are. Um, salesmen like to tell you you can put a you know, tooth thou hole through 10 inches of steel. It doesn't work that way, right? I mean, it's just like any other kind of machine where you're drilling. Uh, you have L to D ratios that you have to be mindful of, right? This is a general uh, guideline. It's not hard and fast. These will change um, based on the material that you're trying to machine or the quality of the pipe, uh, the copper pipe that you're using. So quality, pipe quality is a huge one when it comes to L to D. If it is a lower grade or lower quality pipe, you're going to not get the best L to D possible. So these are good uh, guidelines to use. So, you know, with a copper pipe, we can go down to 2 thou 3 tenths in diameter. Um, so that range starting there up to 5 thou in diameter is about a 10 to 1 L to D. Uh, 6 to 8 thou, we can do about 25 to 1. We can get much better there. Once we get up over 8 thou, um, we can go up to 150 to 1. Um, so it's basic guideline, um, pretty accurate, but it will vary a little bit. Um, so you can use copper pipe, which is most common. That's what we're going to use most of the time. If I needed to get smaller, you actually can on this machine. So we can go down to an 8 tenths diameter uh, hole that we can put in then with this machine. Now, LED on that's only gonna be five to one. And in order to do that, we're gonna use a, a tungsten rod. So how do we achieve that? Cause they're not gonna make a tungsten rod that small. Well, we will buy a tungsten rod, rod and then we can discharge dress it in the machine down to that small of a diameter and put the hole in ourselves. Um, it's gonna be much slower, right? We're only gonna cut about 40 thou per minute. Uh, on that versus a copper pipe where we're going to get up to about an eighth of an inch a minute uh, machining. So you can do some pretty crazy stuff with that machine. Um, so next I want to just go over the uh, water-based uh, dielectrics that we offer from Makino on our drilling, EDM drilling. So what's different about this? Well these are basically aimed at production hole machining, right? So the EDBV and the uh, 3 and 8 are machines that um, we designed um, with production hole uh, machining in mind. Um, it's going to provide optimal speed for production applications. So the main reason we're going to get more speed out of this machine is because we're using a water-based dielectric. We're not using oil. Uh, oil is going to is a much better insulator than water. 
That's why we use oil in sinker EDM. It's easier to control the spark gap that way. Uh, in wire, we're using water, and we're using water because we want to maximize the speed, and we don't have the issue that we normally would have with a sinker. With a sinker, it's gonna you get all those variables based on the electrode size, right? Shape, size, it's gonna change. It's much easier to control that spark gap if we're using oil as a dielectric versus water. Same thing here. We're gonna use water because it's gonna be faster. These machines originally were purpose-built for the aero engine industry. That's why they're called EDBV. So ED means electrical discharge, and BV is blade and vein. That's where the name comes from. That was how these machines were originally designed. Um, you're able to produce the cooling holes and the diffuser shape cavity that's necessary. Um, I'm sure there's somebody in here from the aerospace industry because it's such a big part of your industry over here. Um, so traditionally what you would do is you can put these holes in on a hole popper or whatever, any kind of hole machine, EDM drilling machine, <clears throat> and then you're going to take it over to a sinker or something with like a comb electrode that has the diffuser shapes and you're going to burn those in. This machine can do all of that on one setup. So you can put it on the machine, you can put it in the hole, and that diffuser shape, you can machine that in there. Essentially, you're doing a pocket machining just like you would in a mill uh, to create that diffuser shape. Um, it does a few things for you. Uh, per, minimizes the setups you have to do. You don't have to make the comb electrode. Um, but more importantly, uh, what our customers have found is it really allows the engineers to optimize the cooling hole locations and the diffuser shapes. You could vary those shapes from hole to hole to hole to get the most efficient cooling possible to make the engine more efficient, which is going to improve your fuel consumption, right? So big advantage uh, for the blade and vein industry. It is a fully submerged operation. So unlike uh, most hole poppers where you're just flushing, um, this is a, a fully submerged operation. There's also breakthrough, uh, uh, high-speed breakthrough detection on these machines. So if you're familiar with the industry, the number one no-no is having a back strike. So when you're putting that hole in, you cannot back strike on the back of this. If you do, it's garbage. you got to throw it away. So um, the breakthrough detection that was de developed for this machine allows it to detect the breakthrough at a high speed without having to slow it down um, and still prevent the back strike. And there's fast automatic tool change uh, and guide change capability on these machines as well. So you can change the guide as well as the tool itself. So if I want to put in different diameters, I can do that with a guide changer. Um, and all the standard configurations, if you look at that picture on the right hand side there, uh, they include, uh, these machines include a two axis rotary table. So you get a tilt rotary table there, which allows you to position that blade and vein in any kind of position that you need to put the hole in wherever you need it. So the BX3 machine is a similar machine, but it is different. Um, it is still geared for production hole machining, uh, but it is focused more uh, for you know smaller, high volume type of uh, turbine engine applications. The biggest thing and biggest complaints we had from our customers on the EDBV was the wasted time. So if you're doing production holes, you, you need to get them done as fast as possible. So uh, there was a lot of wasted movement in the EDBV, there really was. Uh, so there was non-value added uh, machine motion. So when we developed the BX3, we reduced those movements um, by over 50% uh, to provide greater unattended machining capability. In addition to that, to help with unattended machining capability, there's a 24 station ATC that will support a 30 inch long electrode. So the electrodes you can put in there are substantial, substantially, it's a long day, much longer than, than um, we get you get it, much longer than what you can do on the EDBV. So that means if the electrode's longer, I can burn longer before I have to change it out, right? 
Um, another thing was the maintenance uh, access points. Um, moved all the access items to the rear of the machine to make it more convenient to uh, access uh, during machining so they didn't have to interrupt the machining. And that also played into the compact layout uh, of the machine to allow more of a paint-to-paint -paint configuration in the shop so you can line these things up uh, very close together so you don't have to take up as much floor space. Uh, then last is our water-based hole poppers. There's three general purpose machines offered. We have our SST FE3, that is just a manual machine with a readout, with a digital readout. So it's like having a bridge port that puts in holes with an electrical discharge. Next is the same machine, but it has a CNC version to it. So you can actually program machines or program locations and move to whatever position you want. Um, there is no ATC, however, so you would have to manually change the tool, but it is fully programmable as a CNC. The FE6, which is the machine we have out here, um, is more of an advanced CNC because it does come standard with the 12 station ATC, so it does lend itself more to, you know, some uh, production applications, light production type of things, where you can utilize that tool changer um, to get a lot more unattended machining. There's also a guide changer option on that machine. So if I wanted to do different size holes, you can option that machine out with a guide changer as well. So you could have both a tool changer and a guide changer uh, on the FE6. All the models are semi-submerged. Um, so what does that mean? Why is that of a, a, an advantage? Well, a lot of your hole poppers, they're not submerged at all, which makes breakthrough more difficult. So by submerging the bottom of the part, um, the breakout becomes much easier because you're not breaking out into air. Um, you could be fully submerged, I think, if memory serves me right because it's been a while since I ran the machine, but I think I did a part up to three and a half inches and that was fully submerged. So, uh, But if I go above that, the bottom of the part will still be submerged, which helps me with breakthrough. Um, and all of these machines come with the filtration and the DI system, right? And you can see that on our machine out there. And the reason I point that out is when you look at com uh, competitive uh, hole popper machines, they don't really option them out with much of anything on them, right? So if you wanted a filter filtration system or you want a DI system, those are going to be add-ons, right? They're going to be add-ons to the base price that you're going to get quoted. Uh, we configure our machines the way that we feel most people are going to want to use them and uh, give you the price. You know, we don't really want to nickel and dime you to death with options, so that machine comes standard with all of that. And all the CNC machines, the uh, control is a Windows-based control, so it's very easy. You can network it to your network, um, really easy control to use, and you can see it out there. But the main thing I want uh, you to take away from this is, is the actual, what is the difference between an oil-based machine and a water-based machine, right? So, because we have both, and really depends on what your application is and what you're looking to use the machine for. So, oil-based cutting performance, you're going to get accuracies of about plus or minus five microns, or two-tenths. Uh, recast layer is going to be about the same, and you're going to get a really nice... Um, edge quality on the hole. When you go to water-based, um, you know, your accuracy is really going to be more um, like 50 microns, two thou, and um, the recast layer, same thing. I wouldn't really call the edge quality rough, but it's going to be rougher than the oil-based machine, um, simply because of the fact that oil is a better insulator. So it's a better insulator. Um, your spark gap's not going to be as big. If your spark gap is not as big, it's not going to do as much damage to the part. So that's why you're going to get a finer edge quality with the oil-based uh, machine. That being said, what does that do to my cutting performance? Um, so as I said before, we can get our hole sizes down to 10 microns uh, with the oil-based. Um, you're not going to go that low 
with a water-based machine. Um, your LDD is going to be a little bit better on the water-based machine. But the big thing is going to be the machining speed, right? So because you're getting higher accuracy, better finishes, better edge quality, because of that oil being a better insulator, it stands to reason it's going to cut much slower, and it does, right? So you're going to be five to eight times slower uh, than you would with a water-based uh, dielectric uh, EDM drill. But you're going to be able to be up to 10 times as accurate, right? So you're going to get much better accuracy and much better service finish. So the service finish on the whole itself is going to be much better, and that can uh, play a factor depending on the application. And we have some examples that we'll talk about. So water base is going to be faster. So let's take a look at some of those examples of some sample parts. Now all these sample parts we're going to talk about, they are out there in the showroom. Um, I don't know if you guys have been walking around, they're on those glass tables, but there's you know just a few parts out there. You can see what these are all about, right? So the first one I want to talk about is this spinneret plate. So this is actually for a, um, it's a spinneret die for, for making cloth, right? So that's what they do. They put the fibers through there and put them together. Um, this was an actual customer that we did this for. Um, so this one, it was a 10 inch or 10 thou uh, copper pipe. And it was about two, a little less than three minutes per hole. So in a little less than uh, four hours uh, overall for total cycle time to put in all 79 of these holes. Uh, and that was going through 240 thou thick uh, plate. But the important thing is, is that's done fully automated, right? So once we start the program, you walk away, it's done. You don't have to worry about it because the machine tracks your, your uh, tube length and all that, right? It knows when to change to go to the next tube and you're off and running. You don't have to sit there and babysit it. Um, so, you know, I mentioned that the, the water-based or EDBV and BX3 was primarily for aerospace industry, but there are applications where you may want to use the fine hole, and this was one of them. This was a fuel swirler uh, that we did for a customer, and the reason they wanted to do this with the fine hole is because they wanted a more accurate hole, more consistent hole, and a better finish. And the reason they wanted that is that it gave them um, better distribution of the fuel, which made it more efficient, right? So in this case, it was a 22 thou diameter hole, and it was about 73 seconds, a little over a minute per hole uh, to do these holes. Um, so you got a very accurate hole with a very low recast. And um, so there are a other applications for fine hole, uh, that you wouldn't normally think about uh, doing. So now the, the water-based. So again, same thing with, the, with this. We found many other applications for this besides uh, blade and vein in this example. This was a shower head um, that we did, and we used uh, two different size tubes on this, uh, 0.5 and a 0.7. Um, average time per hole was only 12 and a half seconds so very fast uh, did that whole thing in under uh, 25 minutes 120 holes and accuracy is about plus or minus a thou on this uh, if you look at that part closely you can see some of the holes are straight so you're at a position where it's at 90 degrees other ones are not they're on an angle that's also why this machine um, worked out very well in this application because it does have the tilt rotary table, right? So you can position it wherever you want it to put that hole in. You can put a tilt rotary table on the fine hole machine, but it's extra, it's an add-on. The EDBV and BX3 come standard because that is the table. And then lastly, the main uh, point or the main application that these machines were designed for is the blade and vein industry. And this is an example right here of doing the diffuser shape and the holes um, on this particular part. This is something our Aero Engine Group did. 
Um, but the, the important thing with the BX is that they were able to uh, get the non-cutting time on this particular part uh, down to 18 minutes. Uh, prior to that on the EDBV, that time was roughly 45 minutes. Uh, so it made a substantial difference, you know, when you're producing these parts. So that gave us a total uh, cycle time of an hour and a half to produce that part. So that's my quick overview of the EDM drilling technologies uh, that Makino has to offer. All right, let's go ahead. Okay. So that was the presentation um, for the hole drilling technologies uh, that we have available. Uh, right now we uh, have a Q&A session. I would just want to point out here uh, that there is a, uh, a chat uh, section where you can put in your question or the Q&A session, uh, section, either one, if you want to type it in there. And then I'll be available to answer these questions. Okay, so it looks like we have one here from Arthur. Uh, he is asking, um, can you shape the electrode? Um, you can shape the electrode. So you can uh, dress the electrode to a shape if you want um, in order to put that shape in the part. So we've done this before. Uh, we put triangles in, you know, different types of shapes uh, that somebody wanted. Uh, primarily, that would be on the... the uh, a fine hole machine where we've done that before. I don't really have any experience with that uh, on the uh, uh, water-based machines, but uh, certainly can do that on uh, the the fine hole machine. Um, had another question here. Um, can a rotary table be added to the EDAF fine hole machine? Yes, it can. So if you, during the presentation, I discussed that the EDBV um, machine and BX3 machine come standard with a tilt rotary. Um, the EDAF fine hole can be uh, equipped with a tilt rotary or t simply just a rotary. So you could have a, a two axis or a single axis table added onto that machine, whatever your application would require. Um, and here's another one. What is the max RPM that the spindle can take? Um, so for both the EDBV, BX3, and the EDAF final, uh, it's 1,000 RPM. So that's your max. However, there are differences in the, in the spindles in the heads. So the... EDBV and BX3 come with what we call an MV head or an MV spindle. That is simply a rot rotating spindle because those machines are designed solely for putting holes in. So it's going to just spin uh, and the max you can go is 100 RPM. The edge fine hole machines or EDAF fine hole machines, excuse me, um, have what we call an MA head. Um, so what that is, it still allows us to do that rotation up to 1,000 RPM, but it also allows us to have C-axis positioning. So in other words, because that machine will still function like a standard sinker EDM. So that is a big advantage to that machine where you can do uh, holes, but you can also uh, burn whatever shapes you'd like as a standard. Um, and the positional accuracy on that uh, C-axis is plus or minus 15 arc second. Okay, we got another question here from Mark. Does the EDAF spindle have capabilities to clock the electrodes? Yes, and so that's what I'm uh, just, you know, talking about. So you can position um, to any rotation that you want, just like you could on a standard uh, sinker machine. So essentially what the fine hole is, uh, it's using the same head, type of head, performance that we get on our standard sinker with some added capability with that 1,000 RPM rotation. OK. 
Okay, another question from Alejandro. Uh, the standard machine have pre-guides so that the electrodes don't wobble. Yes, so, so there are uh, middle guides that are standard um, for the Makino machines. Um, and what they're going to do is they will come out and, you know, prevent that whip from the electrode as it's spinning. So it's going to help guide that. Um, and they will automatically retract you know, as the head comes down uh, so that those those middle guides will remove themselves from the, the machining process. Okay. And then... Joseph has a question here. He wants to know about programming the holes on the EDAF fine hole. Is it similar to the EDVV or BX3? Talking about break, uh, breakthrough blocks, uh, condition and positioning and things. Yes. So the conditions are going to be different, but but the, the format, the principle of programming is going to be the same. So, so the way that you program uh, an EDBV or BX3 is going to be uh, the same on the EDAF uh, final. So the programming is the same. There are some little minor differences here or there, but the principle uh, of how you program is the same. Okay. That looks like all the questions that we have for today. Um, I want to thank everyone for taking a little time out of your day today to spend with us. Um, if you have any questions at all, or further questions, with more in-depth detail about any of these machines that we talked about, please contact your local representative or send me an email um, and uh, we'll get your questions answered for you. So I want to thank everyone and have a great day.